In yesterday's lectures, we considered the purchasing behavior of an individual consumer and how their behavior was impacted by a variety of factors, including the price of the good, their preferences, their income, and other inter interdependent factors. We're now going to flip to the other side of the market and ask about how the sellers within a particular market um, make decisions. And that's, we're going to start similarly as we did yesterday um, with an individual firm's supply decision um, of how much to sell. Right? And so we're going to start with the individual supply curve. And that curve is simply the graph that plots the quantity of an item that an individual firm is willing to sell at every price. And the type of firm we're going to consider is a refinery. So up here in the top right corner, you can see the gasoline supply chain. So this is how gasoline gets from in the ground all the way to your cars. And where it starts off is either imported oil coming in on a ship or domestic oil, which is being drilled out of the ground. That then ships to a refinery. And then there are several actors that then will move gasoline, right? That is converted from oil um, coming out of the ground, converted to gasoline, and then sold to you as consumers here. And so we're going to ask the question of how many ga gallons of gasoline do you think a local refinery would sell to your gas station that you want to then go fill up at for the week if prices were three versus four um, dollars per gallon? So let's first consider the scenario where we have very cheap gasoline. And we consider our individual refinery, and they do their cost benefit analysis, and they decide that the quantity of gasoline that they will supply at $1 per gallon is 10 million gallons for the week. And that's to serve the entire St. Paul and Minneapolis area. Now let's suppose that the price increases. They again will do their um, individual cost benefit analysis. And let's suppose that at that point, they would sell 15 million gallons per week. And so this higher price induces this refinery to stay on longer for the week and to produce, convert more oil into gasoline to then sell to individual buyers. Now let's suppose prices are $3 per um, gallon. All of a sudden, all of the gallons that this refinery is selling to individual consumers can fetch a higher price. And so maybe they find that it's worthwhile to leave the refinery on for a longer period of time. We can continue this exercise and continue to raise the dollars per gallon of gasoline higher and higher. And eventually what we could do is just connect these dots because we don't we know that prices aren't always in these um, equal whole dollar increments. We can have, for example, prices that are 425, 375, 250, et cetera. And that's what gives us our individual supply model. So this individual supply model relates for every single price how much gasoline our refinery will sell to, to a gas station and ultimately to consumers. And notice here that our individual supply model includes a portion here that's zero on the quantity supplied. And so what this model tells us is that if prices are 50 cents per gallon, the refinery will sell nothing. If prices are 99 cents per gallon, the refinery will again sell nothing. But as soon as prices hit $1 per gallon, the refinery will turn on and will um, sell 10 million gallons per week. And this tells us something about the benefit costs um, principle um, that's as it's being applied by the refinery.